Thanks for tuning in to Seven Figure Fitness Business. Now, today we're going to be talking about how you can talk your clients off the cliff. And this is going to be a bit of a follow-on episode from what we spoke about last week with our four personal uh, personality animal types, because a lot of the people that we're going to be referring to in this episode are the stubborn goat variety. Now, I wanted to have, I wanted to throw this to you initially, Iggy, because I know this is a real area of strength of yours. Um, So can you break down a little bit about the conversation topic today, please? Yeah, so um, when it comes to having those conversations with clients, essentially talking them off the cliff, it's really, 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 really important that we have the right attitude about it. I personally have come to really love those conversations because oftentimes a client's breakthrough is on the other side of that conversation if it goes really, really well. And what I've found time after time again, after those tough talks with clients, they get great results, they make they take better action, and they become more engaging clients after having a tough conversation like that. I personally like to call it my coming to Jesus talk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when I need to talk a client off a cliff. <laughs> so, you know, what are what are some of the things? I mean, like when when say, for example, someone has to go through one of your Iggy coming to Jesus talks, what have they typically been doing in the lead up to that to require that sort of a conversation? Yeah. So I mean, it kind of comes back to our animal personality type. So either they've been a stubborn goat, meaning they're not following instructions the way that we need them to. Or there have been some type of dead sheep where they've just kind of gone AWOL um, and they kind of thrown their hands up and kind of put themselves in a situation where they're ready to give up. Or they're being, being kind of like a given into squirrel syndrome where they're super distracted and they're going, doing things that we don't need them to do to get the results that they need in that moment. Right. So they're essentially skipping ahead. Um, and going off and doing their own thing without following instructions. So those are kind of like the three main things that lead up to a a coming to Jesus talk or a client is really feeling discouraged and they're ready to just leave the program or they want to exit or they want to quit. Yeah, it seems to always start from what I've experienced with a breakdown of communication. Um, So often there'll be, you know, poor communication on the part of the client where, Ultimately, they don't communicate if they don't understand something, if they're not happy with something. And rather than kind of coming out with it and sorting it straight away and getting the support that they need, you'll kind of find them sort of curled up in in the fetal position in the corner. And then eventually they'll kind of stick their hand up and it's like they're saying, you know, I can't do this anymore. And and I think in a case like that, it's, it's actually not within their best interest for us to actually let that kind of behavior occur just in the same way that it wouldn't be okay for one of our fitness clients to be doing really well, go and have this massive bender for one day and for us to say, okay, fine, we're going to let you give up on your goals, right? Exactly. And having being willing to have those conversations with people is really a labor of love. Like if you don't care about what you do and you don't care about the person and you really don't have their best interests at heart, you're going to shy away from having that kind of conversation because at the end of the day, you don't really care about whether or not you keep them or whether or not they get their end results that they're working with you for. Um, and you want to take the path of least resistance. So if it's oftentimes it's easier, just let the client go and, and commit, you know, emotional suicide, if you will, when it comes to reaching their goals. But if we really care about people and want to get them results, we have to be willing to have those conversations with them. In weight loss in our niche, I'd say that 90% of people um, are coming to us because they've tried to lose weight and they can't and they need additional support to be able to get there. So in many ways, if you don't have, you know, one of Iggy's coming to Jesus chats with, um, you know, one of your clients, you're actually letting them go and you're actually failing as your purpose as their coach. Yeah, I think that's true. For me, I started learning. I, I had to learn how to have these conversations. I used to be a big people pleaser in the sense that I was afraid to hurt people's feelings and I didn't want to say anything that was going to offend them or make them feel bad about themselves. Uh, And one of my mentors did a great job really like getting me to change my mindset around having these type of tough talks with people. He said, if you really care about somebody, um, it's like a mother or it's like a, a parent 
knowing that a child is about to consume poison and they don't do anything for that kid. Right. Like if you really love, if you really love the child, you're going to keep them from consuming the poison. So it's the same thing. Like you got to kind of have that heart towards your clients and really look at them and like, wow, I really want to make sure this person gets the best result possible and have the best possible experience. And I want to help them get the breakthrough that they need so that they can get the results and sustain it. And in order to be able to do that, you got to be willing to go there with people and call them out on their BS and call them out on their nonsense so that they can open their eyes and see how self-sabotaging their actions are and how it's really impacting not that just not just their goals, but oftentimes when we have those talks, people realize how it's impacted other areas of their life and be, and they begun and they can be start this breakthrough where they start making real change, not just towards their goals, but in other aspects of their lives as well. Yeah. I mean, this is an area of strength that you possess as part of your skill set e that I really, really have so much respect for because it's such a complicated topic, being that. Often you're dealing with people that have become irrational, closed off, defensive. And so for you to basically go in and start reading them the riot act, it could really go down like a rock in water, you know? So you need to make sure that you find the fine line between them feeling that you're giving them hard words to help rather than, you know, hard words to hurt. So how do you, how do you navigate that kind of, you know, um, I guess degree of, or the other fine line of that particular issue? It's, it's difficult. It's probably one of the most difficult things you can learn how to do as a coach is have being able to manage people's personalities and their emotions. So what I often have to do is really prepare myself just mentally to be able to go there with somebody. Right. So I have like a, an acronym that I use. Um, it's called be real. And the real part is what is my acronym that I'll go through. So the R is just reflect. So I'll reflect on the situation. I'll reflect on the client. I'll reflect on who they are, their kind of like personalities, their strengths and weaknesses, and really reflect on like what is going on and try and remove my my, my emotions from it and try and get as objective about what is really going on so I can get really clear. Okay, so for me, when I'm reflecting, I'm thinking through, well, is this really just a matter of opinion? Is this my opinion? you know, that this person is going through this, or is there like concrete evidence that they're actually really struggling with X, Y, and Z? Um, And is this something that's really going to be important that needs to be addressed in order for them to get the result that they want, right? There's certain quirks that people have where it's like their personality can rub you off the wrong way. And, you know, and it's like, yeah, you know, what? It's really not that big of a deal. And you got to be really wise about picking your battles. Um, So I'll reflect on, on the situation and think, okay, how can I best approach this? Is it really something that needs to be um, addressed? And I'll figure out what are the main evidences or situations where I can really anchor in on and be like, hey, this is the actual situation. This is the matter of fact. This is what really happened. Mm-hmm. So I'll reflect on that. And then I'll transition to E where uh, it's, in, it's about, all about encouragement. And so for me, this is really important because I want to think about the positive traits of the client, no matter how difficult they're being. I want to think about, you know, what what was it like onboarding them? You know, what are their their aspirations? You know, what was their why? Um, and what are their intentions for wanting to start this? And I start to really thinking through their goals and think for things. I'm like, you know, this person is really awesome. They're just behaving in a way that's outside of their character, and they're just behaving in a way that's really not true to who they are. And I really focus on the positive aspects of the client, so I can really see them despite their shortcomings and see like the good in them. Um, And then next goes the A, which is appeal. So that's when I start thinking through, okay, what are the things based on like what they're going through? What are, what am I really going to address when I want to talk to this person? So what's the appeal that I'm going to make to them? What, how am I going to really present my case and things like that? So I start thinking through that. And then I close it out with L, which is just love, you know, loving up on them and letting them know that I really care about them. And then I'm going back to, to the E and really going through and putting together another list of things that I really like about the client and things that I really appreciate about them. So that when I have that conversation with them, they can really feel that I actually care about them and that I'm not coming from a place where I'm trying to tear them down. Right. So I'll often start off by just saying some things that I, that I like about genuine things that I see in their character that that's strong and that's positive. 
so that they can know that, hey, I'm not coming at you thinking that you're the worst person in the world, right? I'm coming at you because I actually think that you're a lot better than what you're displaying, right? So I'll share some of those positive attributes. And then after I share a few of them, then I dive into A, which is where I start hammering and really going in on the things that they need to change um, and holding the line on the standards that we need to uphold as an organization, as a company and addressing whatever situation it is. And I found that as soon as I'm able to establish that I really actually care about the person, I can say whatever I need to say to get the message across. And that could be as if somebody is looking from the outside and just sitting as a fly on the wall in some of these conversations, they may be like, holy shit, I can't believe he just said that (laughs) (laughs) to this person. Like, can you actually say that to people? Right. If you're if you're not if you don't understand what's happening in that conversation, you can hear me say something and be like, wow, I can't believe you just said that. Right. But that's because I preface it, letting them know that I actually care about them. And then once I've dive, dove into like the difficult things that I needed to say to really help them see where they're at and help them make the change that they need to, that they need to make. Then I close it out with love and just let them know, like, hey, I really care about you. I think you can do incredible things. And I close it out like I genuinely believe that we can get you the results that you need. And I genuinely believe that you are 100% capable of getting to where you want to go. But these are the things that we need to address. And these are the things that need to change if we're going to get to where you want to be. There's so many great things in there, Iggy. And I mean, it's really funny because for a long time, the three of us have sort of joked that, you know, you need to kind of go and deliver your coming to Jesus talk or maybe like a, just a, we might call it just like a genuine ass whooping to somebody who needs to be kind of brought <laughs> in line. But really, I mean, so much of what you're doing there is awesome because even just from the sales perspective with communication, you know, we know that people are not going to be able to hear you if they're in a state of defensiveness, anger, irritation. And so basically what you're doing is you're giving them needed compliments that are genuine and making them feel heard, like, first of all, just to kind of lower the the defensiveness so that both parties aren't stonewalling each other. And then you get to the point where you've almost kind of earned the respect and the permission at that stage to then start kind of, I suppose, going to town a little bit on the points that need to be changed. And you almost sound like you're kind of attacking not the person, but their actions and behaviors as well. And that's a really important part of it as well, because I know that myself included, but people in general, we tend to hate when people call our character or us as a person into into question. So by going after their particular actions and behaviors, but sort of separating that from from the person itself, I think you're going to get a lot more positive out output from that. Absolutely. And it makes a big difference when you're able to separate the person as a as a human being away from like their actions and what they're currently displaying. I always like my mentor used to tell me like never say somebody's being stupid, right? Never say somebody's being dumb or somebody's being annoying. You need to say like they're acting stupid or they're acting dumb <laughs> or they're acting annoying. Right. That way you're not addressing them. Like you're not calling them. You just say, hey, this particular thing that you're doing is really annoying. <laughs> yeah. Right. So learning how to communicate in that way makes a big difference. The quality of the program is another critical thing as well. I mean, you know, there are when 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 generally people decide that they want to leave a program, it's generally because they've let themselves down, but sometimes they're not happy with the quality of the service of what they're getting. But I think one of the things that we definitely have is we know like 100% deep down in our hearts that we have the best program out there. And that makes the job very, very easy having these coming to Jesus chats as well, right? Absolutely. I like to, I was telling, actually telling the team, our coaching department, like last week, that the only reason why we're able to actually have these tough talks with mm-hmm. people is because of the fact that I know we're going above and beyond to serve our clients. Like we surround them by a great support team. They're constant, they're able to access us one-on-one. There's a ton of calls for them to be able to attend. There's so many resources that we put into the program. And in fact, before we even launched it, we spent like six months <laughs> mapping out the entire curriculum, what we want to deliver to clients. So for me, it was like, I know if we need to, we're going to obviously eat the fish and spit out the bones. But if there's room for us to improve, we want to be objective about it. But when you've put so much time and you've put so much love and you put so much effort into really delivering something that's truly world class, 
you can stand, you can come from a place of authority where you know for sure it's not because you've you've you have you failed to serve this person, right? They're struggling because they've there's a genuine issue that they need help with. And it's not because like, oh, the product you're delivering sucks, right? We know that for a fact that that's not the case because of how much time we put into improving, how much effort we put into like making sure that it's top notch and how much goes into supporting each and every one of our clients. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we've said this time and time again, but the one of the major reasons we wanted to start this business is because we've all three of us been in many a mentor program and we know what we like and what we don't like. And we also know that there's an industry standard in this space that most programs deliver very poor support and a poor ROI. In fact, usually it's no ROI. And the issue with that is it, it actually makes it really, really a lot more painful for us when somebody comes in and decides to be stubborn and they don't want to make a change because I think we know that this is their this is their absolute opportunity to turn things around. And sometimes people can let just a tiny little thing that happens in their own world impact everything and it cascades out. So a big part of this is it kind of really does feel like they're about to fall off the, the cliff and that you're basically like grabbing that strong hand out around their collar to like to pull them back in, you know, because otherwise if they, if they do kind of let something so small derail them, I guess the three of us kind of know very well where they're likely to be going elsewhere. And it's, it's just really depressing. Absolutely. You know, for me, I know nine out of 10 times, if a client's able to overcome this difficult situation, the blessings literally right around the corner. The results is literally right around the corner. And this is their challenge that they have to be able to overcome to test how bad they really want this. Mm. And clients who fail that test that um, my mentor used to call it the, the test of perseverance, where you have a goal that you set and you're trying to reach it. And then all of a sudden, as randomly, you just get hit by a difficult situation. You get hit by something that comes out of the blue that really tests how badly you want to reach this goal. Case of case in point, right before we're about to start systems by design, I get slapped with a lawsuit <laughs> that seemingly came out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the heck? Right. So that's the test of perseverance. Like how bad do you want this thing? And are you willing to weather the storm to get to the other side of the finish line? Yeah. Right? So oftentimes people don't realize that they're being tested, like how badly they want their goals when it's when they feel like there's things coming into their personal life or something's happening or or they're feeling overwhelmed, all these different things are tests of perseverance that that call you to question how badly do you want to reach your goals and how bad do you want it. And if you're willing to persevere through it, you're going to get the result and you're going to be successful. And it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when, right? When is that success going to come? I want to throw a shout out out to, uh, I know someone we're all big fans of, but it's one of our members at the moment, a guy called Michael. Now he's had definitely one of the slower starts in our program for a number of reasons that were sort of controllable, but they, you know, I think he started off in a position where you know, English is a second language. He's been working on sales skills, marketing and all that kind of stuff. And I just couldn't be more impressed with the guy because he's never really decided to stop playing. And it took him a long time before he finally cracked the code. And then all of a sudden, it was three days in less than 72 hours and he closed $6,000 worth of programs. And all it took for him was complete and utter determination. And at no stage did we see any sign of giving up on his part. And this is the difference between winners and losers, right? Is at some stage, things get tough for everybody. And it's the way that you react to those situations, taking a step back and seeing the big picture, that really determines who you are as a person and what you're going to actually achieve. Absolutely. Absolutely. Michael is like one of my favorite guys. For him, he is a great example of passing the test of perseverance. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) He's a fantastic example of that. And I wish more people faced obstacles with that kind of attitude where they're like, where they're willing to take full responsibility and not look for anything to blame. He did not one time try to blame the program, not one time try to blame anything outside but himself. My, these are things that I'm lacking. I'm lacking these skills. And I'm really grateful and thankful that you guys are willing to help me develop these skills so I can get to where I want to go. If more people had that attitude, my goodness, it'd be nine day difference to kind of results that some of the clients uh, will have going through any program or going through anything that they that they're that they're working on. 
if you think about any successful entrepreneur, like they've written, you know, all, all the most successful people have usually written a, a biography or they've had one written about them, right? And think about all the struggles. I mean, I remember Jeff Bezos, like, I mean, his company was not profitable for years and it's now, you know, the biggest company in the world. He's the richest man in the world. Elon Musk, I mean, obviously I know they're kind of jumping back and forth. So depending on when, when this is re released, but I mean, he nearly bankrupted SpaceX, literally one more crashed flight and that was done. That's his major passion project down the toilet. And, you know, Michael, as an example, I mean, he had every excuse to quit. And, you know, a lot of people would have probably like more than 50% of people would have given up, given the same strain that he went through and he did yeah. it. I think that's a credit to him and it's a credit to people that succeed is that they don't look for early opportunities to give up. And basically, they tend to be very much about that internal locus of control rather than external. They don't let outside or external factors impact themselves. They keep on going back to the drawing board. They assess what they've done right. They assess what they've done wrong. And they make the necessary behavior, uh, behavioral and um, changes and, and action steps. It, it's, it's absolutely essential for your long-term uh, success to go through that period of analysis and change. I yeah. think one of the other things with this is actually being able to enjoy the highs and lows of business. You know, like I think every single day in business, you're it's a roller coaster. It's always going to be up and down. And if you let, you know, all the downs bother you and, you know, that makes you become the sort of person who wants to quit, then you're going to have a very, very tough time. But instead, if, you know, you experience something tough, like you have a client wanting to quit on you and it's a tough day because, you know, you need to, take them through and take them through that critical conversation, you can then, you know, like E, you know, you thrive off this. You love these conversations. And when I you do. actually, yeah, and when you actually really begin to enjoy the tough things in your day, you enjoy your challenges, you know, that's when it's not emotional anymore and it's not even a roller coaster. It's just a normal part of daily life that gets you towards your end goals. Absolutely. And, I, and the thing I love, the reason why I really enjoy these conversations it's because I already see the victory on the other side of them. I know if I can help this client get, get through this situation, man, the results that they're going to get on the other side of this is going to be crazy because everyone who goes through it has to make a significant breakthrough in order to, for them to want to continue. And it's oftentimes that breakthrough that serves as a catalyst that allows them to get the momentum that they need to start actually making progress. So I look forward to these conversations. Anytime somebody's having reaching that breaking point and need to have one of those talks, I'm excited about it. I'm like, man, this is going to be awesome because not only are they going to become a great uh, testimonial, but they're going to become a great case study because I can show them examples of of how they were struggling when they started, like their before and after, <laughs> and it just makes it much more exciting testimonial when you can say, hey, this is the long ass message that this client sent me a few months ago of them struggling. Look at where they're at now. And that speaks to about 90% of people who are looking to potentially start working with us who only see the highs that other programs deliver. They don't see how other people work through the lows with their clients because most of them don't. When clients are going through a low, they often, I've been in the backside of other programs like that where if the client's really struggling, they're looking to get the client out of the program as quickly as possible. Right? They're not trying to help them through that difficult situation. They're not trying to help them through that low. Their only care about is finding the clients who are crushing it so they can get a testimonial and use that to bring more, more people in. Right, So the fact that we are building a library of clients who hit that low and we're able to help them overcome it and then we see the backside of the transformation and the results that they get, for me, it makes I appreciate those uh, results way more than people who come in and just hit the ground running and just blue skies and rainbows from start to finish because that's not ninety nine percent of people's. That's not going to be their situation, right? Those are like the unicorns that we run into. Um, so I find these kind of tough situations exciting because I know the kind of impact they're going to have not only in this person but how I'm going to be able to use it to inspire other people who are going through a difficult time as well. Let's put it in weight loss terms, right? So people yo-yo diet, 96% of people who lose weight um, regain it within two years period of time, which means that, you know, 96% of all of your clients are going to, you know, hit a crossroad at some point in time. They're going to, you know, change their actions and they're going to go back to normal. You know, as a coach, you know, what you're doing here is you're intervening at that point 
where they're about to start yo-yo dieting again and go back to their normal habits. Now, in order for you to actually give them the true um, transformation that they need, you know, a lot of the time you're going to need to be there because a lot of the time what we're talking about, it isn't actually technical. It's not actually necessarily the nutrition. It's not necessarily the exercise. It's a psychological transformation that needs to take place for that person to break through to the next level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to throw it out. Like we talked about this last week as well, but you guys are both definitely audacious lions, right? And one, one of the reasons why that's the case is because you're both very goal driven. You take a lot of responsibility and, you know, very systems minded as well. And I think a lot of the time I've experienced this over years, you know, being in, in business partnerships with both of you, but all three of us have certainly become a lot less you know, we'll become desensitized to, you know, the bad. And obviously you said this earlier, Gosen, but you're going to have the good and the bad in business. And there's often a misconception for people that are struggling, especially when they're starting out, that things nice and rosy for those people. It's just, I wish it could be the same for me because I'm struggling. And that's just bullshit, to be honest, because most people are having highs and lows all the time. Gosen, the amount of times that you'll drop me a message at like 11.30 p.m. at night being like, we just had like our ads accounts blocked. And it's just like, you know, in a case like that, you just have to deal with it, right? Like, I mean, roll with the punches. I know every time that happens, I know that you have your head down and you're working your ass off to do what needs to be done. And it's the same with you, Iggy. When something breaks, when something needs to be fixed, you guys don't complain. You don't bitch and moan about it. You just get it done. And that's a, it's a real personality change that has to occur in people that want to be successful. It's one of the, I mean, we have like our success principles that I'm teaching the clients is going through the program. And one of the principles that we dive into is just enjoying the process. Don't focus on the end result. Don't focus on the end goal. Focus on who you're becoming as you're going through this journey, right? If you focus on really becoming the person who's going to reach that goal, then the goal is going to come no matter what. It's just a matter of time. So if you can really enjoy the process, I know that's kind of where we're at. Our head's our headspace is that when it comes to the business or when it comes to life is like, I really believe we all enjoy the process. So we don't look at the lows as, as a negative thing. We don't look at it as a bad thing. We, we see it as an opportunity to buckle down, improve, get better. And then we know what's going to come on the other side, which is going to be the high that we're going to ride. But we're not looking for that roller coaster. We're just enjoying the process on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we're able to do that, it's just a matter of time. We're going to be successful no matter what we do, simply because we're allowing ourselves to evolve along the way and looking for ways that we can improve ourselves on a personal level. How can we how can we show up with the right attitude? How can we improve our skills? And what do we need to do to be the best version of ourselves so that we can give the best of ourselves to our to our business and to each other? 100%. I think people allow sometimes allow money to corrupt them as well. You know, whether they're paying for a program, whether they're wanting to get paid by clients and all they can think about is how much money they're going to make in that moment tomorrow, the next day. Whereas if you, you know, as you said, Iggy, if you're the person who focuses on your skills and focuses on becoming a better person, gamifying something and thinking, I don't care how much money I make in the next day, week, month. What I care about is how much money I'm going to be making in a year five years, 10 years, you run a far more steady ride because you're not, you know, going to be reactive to the changes in the amount of money that's coming and going. I really like exactly. what you said, Iggy, about, you know, basically sort of, I guess, being present in the moment as well. So, you know, thinking about who you need to be and the actions you need to take now. I remember, uh, I think it was James Kant that said this, but he was telling me that living in the past is basically the definition of depression. And living in the future is the definition of stress and anxiety. And it's it's not to say that we can't have goals. Goals are incredibly important. But I do think that there's a big part of this where people need to stay present in the moment they're in and just assess the situation and break it down into the simple action steps and behavioral changes that need to occur. And if you can do that, then you live in this state where you're highly optimistic about what's to come, okay. right? And I really think being optimistic is is can be slightly underrated. Because optimistic, like if you're able to remain optimistic on a day to day basis and you really look at your hardships and you look at the challenges and you really see them as opportunities just to be better and for you to show up as the best version of yourself, that kind of attitude gives you resilience that most people do not have. 
right? I still have people who reach out to me and like, do like, how how have you how are you able to go through this situation that you went through last year with the right attitude? And I had one of our guys on our team was like, dude, like, I did not hear you say a single negative thing about X, Y, and Z, or this person or the other. Like, what the hell? Like, how are you able to kind of go through this entire thing and not have a, a single negative thing to say? And it's just enjoy the process no matter what you do. And that's going to give you that resilience. If you're able to do that, it really is just a matter of when you're going to be successful, not if. When you watch it, when you watch a movie, like good movies are designed to create emotion, right? And mm-hmm. when it's someone else's story and they're going through all sorts of emotional highs and lows, you can detach and you can enjoy that. But, you know, but when it's actually your own life and your own story, all of a sudden people hate the same thing that they love to watch, right? Whereas if you can externally step out of your own body and watch your life like you're watching a movie, you can truly enjoy what's going on. Yeah. And it takes a level of skill to even be able to do that, to like really detach yourself from, from the results and just look and try and see the bigger picture and act you know, with, with that in mind. It's a difficult thing to do. And I remember reading this book uh, by Brian Tracy where they were surveying um, all the like wealthiest people in America. And the common trait that they said that all had in common is that they acted on a day-to-day basis with the long-term consequences in mind. Isn't that crazy to think about? Like that's like one of the most common traits of out of like 85% of the successful people that they that they uh, surveyed or interviewed or uh, studied. That's one of the big recurrent themes that they saw is like they always thought about, you know, how do their day to day actions affect their their future? What were the long term consequences of what they're doing today? Right. And oftentimes, go ahead. I was just going to say, I've heard people say, and I really love this as well, is that the best way to make a change is to take the actions and behaviors of the person that you want to become. So say, for example, if you've got 20 kilos to lose, basically, you need to start acting like a a lean individual who's trapped, currently trapped in a fat body, right? So you you take the actions and and the behaviors of somebody who's already in that position. You know, it's the same thing with success. That's the way that you basically project success into your life is that, you know, you understand that successful people, they're not just lucky for getting there. They've obviously meticulously and step-by-step taken the right steps to get there. and, And that's really where it begins. So I wanted to change topic just for the end of the the session, guys. I mean, you both being the type of people you are, you're very successful. So do you find that there can, I'm going to throw this to you, Iggy. Do you find that there's ever any challenges for you as an audacious lion dealing with people that are so different to you in the sense that they are being a stubborn goat or a dead sheep? Like how do you manage those people differently given that your ability to relate to them is somewhat stretched? I would say it's something that I've learned to do over time. And it's something I've learned to do do just through just coaching, being mentored, having to have mentors willing to have coming to Jesus talks with me. (laughs) I probably had more coming to Jesus talk than anybody else that I know. That's why I'm so good at having them with other people, (laughs) you know, but it's, it's just a matter of learning and staying curious about who these people are. I mean, that's really kind of how I'm able to manage different personalities. I, I'm really curious about people and I want to get to know them. And I don't, tr- I try not to make any assumptions or anything like that and just keep a very open mind as I'm approaching each person because everyone's different and they're all unique in their own ways. So I used to struggle with relating to people who didn't have the same kind of drive, who didn't have the same kind of like tenacity or audacity or, or whatever. And that was just because I was just naive and I was younger. But now I see that it's like, just like, hey, you know, this is an opportunity for me to learn a different perspective or learn uh, how to relate with somebody and really see what are the things that I like about them? What are the things that I think are really strong and focus on the positives that I see in them and get really, really good at, at observing people's strengths and honing in on their strengths versus like looking at their shortcomings and being like, oh, like, this person sucks at this. They can't do this. Or, Why aren't they more like this or X, Y, and Z and just focusing on their positive traits? That's what helps me personally uh, be able to relate to different types of personalities and different people from different backgrounds. Yeah, I think the word I love that you used there, um, Iggy, was curious. And I think that's the perfect example of how you need to be. You know, curious, you need to find out all the details, every piece of information that you possibly can about where that person's at. 
And by being curious, that's how, and knowing everything and understanding their situation, you're going to help people. So if you just naturally go in there with that tendency, I can see exactly why you're so successful at these calls. And, you know, for myself, I'm definitely someone, I don't, you know, I've always, I generally haven't really liked the calls too much, but, you know, I do feel that, hey, when you just go in there with the intention of helping that person as much as you possibly can and having the backing and knowledge and knowing that, you know, we have a world-class program, they actually become really easy. Absolutely. Um, and you're stacking the odds in your favor if we're able to do that. If your program sucks and you don't feel good about it, work on making it the best possible so you can have those conversations <laughs> with confidence. <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing worse than having that in the back of your mind, people complaining about X, Y, and Z, and you know they're, they're legitimate complaints. <laughs> It's hard, to, even if the, even if you know that you can help the person, it's hard to really see past that and get to the heart of the matter. If you if you can't, if you don't have the authority to be able to do it from from a from a coaching perspective, that's right. It's very very hard when someone says you didn't keep me accountable, and then you didn't even show up for the come to Jesus call. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but no, it's, um, it's, it's, it's very important that you understand and know that. And I think that's, that's huge. Just knowing that you have something world-class behind you and knowing and hundred percent believing that you've got the best product out there and you can look at that person and go, Hey, it's this person and how they are, their personality, what they've chosen to do, which is at fault for why they haven't succeeded. Yeah. And that's, and that can come off as like, if somebody's looking at it the wrong way, that can come off really arrogant. You can come off like, who do these guys think they are to be able to say that? But it's like, what I go back to uh, one of my mentors. He was telling me, you know, if you're a world class chef and you know how to make and you specialize in a particular dish and you know how to make it taste really, really good. And, you know, like it's really good. If somebody says it's not good, there's a problem with them. <laughs> 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 you know, it's like there's a problem with them. Like if you're a world class chef, and you've won these awards and you've gotten a proven track record. And when you prepare this dish, you follow the same formula and you put everything into making sure it's perfect. Somebody eats it and they're like, this is absolute garbage. He's like, yeah, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> That's what he used to tell me. But you got to make sure your skill, you put the time into developing your skills and put the time into honing your craft to where you can confidently say that what you're putting out is a really good product, right? It's a really good service. And it takes a level of confidence to, and a lot of discipline and hard work to be able to say that. And I know for a fact we can say it because of how much time we've put into doing what we're doing and how much money we've invested into making sure we have the best of the best, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So don't look at it as like, oh, we're being arrogant. No, if you know you're, you're good and you've put time into your craft and you've put time into honing your skill, it's false humility to try and say oh no you know we're not that good that's that's a lie mm -hmm. i know we're the shit and i know we're very good because we stay up day and night working on our skills and we spent countless amount of money into developing and investing back into ourselves and into the business and make sure it's the absolute best and if you can't say that confidently you have a problem saying that then you need to reevaluate kind of where you're at and really evaluate if you put in the time to to say that you are at the top of your game when it comes to delivering the kind of results that you want to deliver to people. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you on the next episode.